how do different cone materials affect the sound of loudspeakers? This question comes from Scott in Austin, Texas. How do you choose materials for your speaker cones? Paper, Kevlar, metal, polymers, etc. Do different materials lend themselves better to different audio ranges? For example, would you use paper for a sub, but Kevlar for the mid-range? I'd expect that testing of all the different materials is very time-consuming and expensive. Scott, you'd be right. It takes a lot of time and effort to do all of that. Fortunately, most of that work has been done over many, many years. And yes, materials matter greatly, not only in loudspeakers, but in everything we do. I'll give you an example. We're sitting out in the production area right now, and you can see a big stack of electronics. And oh, here, oh my gosh, here is a, I'm holding a pack of gold-plated screws. Now, we, we use, geez, those are heavy. We use those on our gold-plated copper bus bars. And we use gold because uh, it's not that it sounds better or anything. We use gold simply because it does not corrode. And a gold screw atop a gold bus bar, when you tighten that thing down, it's going to deliver energy in a, in a power bus bar situation as good or better over a long term than anything else we've ever been able to come up with other than just soldering. But these big quarter inch bars can't, can't really be soldered. So we, we use those screws, but their materials matter a lot because when you are trying to accomplish something like holding down and making electrically uh, good connections, materials make a heck of a big difference. We, we use gold throughout our circuit boards where it matters, our connectors so they don't corrode and provide good long-term non-oxidizing connections for you, but specifically going back to cone material, I, I don't think I have seen a, 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 a lack of different cone materials. I've seen bamboo, I've seen uh, tin, I've seen um, oh, impregnated lead, I've seen all kinds of polymers and, and plastics and you name it, somebody has made a speaker cone driver with it. If we look at what the speaker cone is trying to accomplish, it, it might make more sense. What we want is a perfect piston. A speaker cone, regardless of what frequency, whether it's a dome or a, a cone or whatever we're trying to do, moves in and out to pressurize and depressurize the air in accordance to an electrical signal that it gets on its input. Now, that pressurization and depressurization of the air is what we call sound when we hear it. When I'm speaking right now, my vocal cords, my lungs are providing the pressure, my vocal cords are closing on and off the pressure coming out of my lungs and I am pressurizing and then I'm taking it away and pressurizing, taking it away to very fast frequencies and you hear the sound of my voice. A loudspeaker is doing the same thing but it's acting more like a piston. So what we want are a combination of things. Let's take, let's take a woofer. With a woofer we're going to cover, oh I don't know, pick uh, 50 hertz to 1,800, I don't know. 50, let's, let's go 50 to 800 hertz. Within that band, you want this piston to move exactly in accordance with the magnetic coil that is powering it, right? So if the coil jumps away from the permanent magnet and pushes that piston out, you want it to do a couple of things. One, you don't want it to change its shape. Two, you want to make sure that it follows the coil and its instructions from the magnetic field properly. So those are just two of the things that we're interested in. And, and there's more, but let's just, let's just keep it to that. So how do, we, how do we do that? Well, the first thing, following 
the signal, that's a function of mass. If it's too heavy, if it's too much mass, it weighs too much, then as you push it out, it will keep going. We have overhang, or it won't, it'll, it'll take time to get going. And so you want to use a substance, a cone material that is as low mass as possible so that it moves quickly uh, and gets started quickly and then stops at the appropriate time in accordance with its input signals. But if we were to use something as low mass as this piece of paper, what would happen? Well, under pressure, this paper is going to buckle and it's going to change its shape. Now that's something else we don't want. So now I have to have an added virtue, which is stiffness. So if I want to take paper, I'm going to have to have fairly thick paper, and it's probably going to have to have little ribs in it. If you've ever looked at a can, you'll notice that most cans are ribbed beneath their paper, and that's to provide strength because you can take a, a thin piece of metal and flex it, but if you put ribs in it, uh, indentations and, and uh, protrusions, that stiffens it right up. So if you look at a, 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 a roof uh, out of metal, a corrugated metal roof, you notice how it goes up and down like, like a sine wave. It's there for strength because that rippling gives that strength. So if you'll notice most woofers uh, whether they be paper or whether they be metal, have, have ribbing in them to strengthen them. So it's a combination using engineering to get as stiff a property as we can while maintaining low mass. And the same can be true for every frequency, whether it's the mid-range or the tweeter. Now tweeters in particular are very hard because you're trying to drive that thing 20,000 times a second and there you need very very low mass and and, uh, and and lightweight thin material that can that can move the air so yeah um, everybody's got a different scheme that combines some levels of stiffness uh, some level of not there, there's a, a another property called oil canning if a if a a driver buckles or flexes, they call it oil canning. Remember the old oil cans? Little things where you, you push down on your finger, that's, you know, and you push hard, it kind of bends the metal and forces the oil out. That's called oil canning. And that's the kind of thing you don't want to have happen. So some of the best today, like for woofers, I, I per, particularly like aluminum, very thin aluminum. We use a sandwich, usually a Kevlar, uh, you can use a, a Kevlar sandwich where you have two pieces of aluminum and it's sandwiched. That gives it strength, but you know, low mass. No, there's, there's just hundreds. And yes, we spent a lot of time doing that. So thanks for the question. Hope that helped shed a little bit of light on it anyway. All right.